Hi this is Lucy and today I will be showing you which plans I use and which Atom Store items I use to produce the kinds of camps that I do. I also want to show you alternatives if you are unable to get certain items and I have had some success so if you're interested in this please stay tuned. So the first item on my list is the in-game brick building set. As well as being an extremely attractive set with lots of different window styles and door styles, well two of each, this set is actually the toughest set in the game. So if you want to build a camp where there are lots of enemies, this is the set for you. However, what most builders use it for is these top wall arches. If you like to double wall your camp, you will know that this set is the only set that allows you to double wall top wall arches. I will show you. I'm going to destroy these two walls. Firstly though I am going to double wall underneath which you can do across two foundations by using two doorways. I will get to the flamer trap, don't worry, it is in my list. Now, although the first wall has to be brick, the second wall can be any type of wall. So I will use the barn set. As you can see, that one went on without a problem. This one will not go on. These break in a very different way. As you can see, they look completely different. If we repair this now, you will see that this side is double walled and you can put wallpaper on both sides. This one didn't work. Early on in the game, this set used to only be available from the vendor at Harper's Ferry, who was actually in Harper's Ferry. And early on in the game, I actually traversed the map to uh, get to Harper's Ferry, dying multiple times and meeting my first Scorch Beast at Hopewell Cave. The plan now unlocks at level 20 and it is available from the White Spring Station, any of the Responder Railway Stations, and the radar stations and at Watoga so it is much easier to get hold of. Another interesting thing about this set that I discovered a while ago for some reason if you're one of those players that likes to lock their camps You can jump through the single windows. I've never been able to work that out. There is a way to put glass in them if you want. Um, it's I never lock my camps, but just be aware of that if that's an issue for you. But hopefully you'll only be using it for the top wall arches. And if you don't like this set, you can, of course, just swap the walls out after the fact.
The next item is the humble pressure plate. A few months into the game, somebody noticed this very strange phenomenon. Which is, some areas of the map, you can place an object like this and it will disappear into the map and pop back up. But the item on top stays in the same place. This is how merging was born. But, as you can see, it's a bit variable. And not all camp areas have these spots. Then someone realised that a pressure plate would also do the same thing. You have much more control because it's incremented steps, it takes longer, but control is an issue. To activate a pressure plate, i.e. Make, make the top panel go down, you can just select and move it. And then selecting the object that you're merging into, you can just select release, select release. And there we go. You can put things on shelves. You can make your own furniture by merging different pieces of furniture together. I use it for lots and lots of different things. I personally tend to put a mannequin on mine. It keeps it down all the time, but it's not necessary. Some people power it up. I have had problems with this on Xbox. I do not know why. You can't power it directly. You have to use a connector in between. If you power it up and it doesn't work, I mean, obviously it's already depressed. If you ever have a problem where you power it up and it won't go down, store it, get it out again. I tend to find if you've been fiddling with it, playing with it for a while and doing this, it sometimes doesn't work. The other problem I found with this is that you can be, I, when I'm in the zone, when I'm building, I don't want to have to worry about my equipment. It does tend to pop up for me. Again, it might just be a console Xbox issue. I don't know. So that is how you use a pressure plate. This is an in-game plan. It is called Advanced Power Connectors. It's available from Watoga Station. Vendor bot Wallace at Barclay Springs and his equivalent at the White Springs, which is the Free States vendor. It's also available at the White Springs from the shopping mall vendor. And if you've done the Enclave quest, it's available from the Modus production terminal, which is the one downstairs. The next item on the list is, of course, my trusty Flamer Trap. You will not find this plan, or I, I'll be very, very surprised if you ever found this plan in a player vendor. It is only available from doing two quests at Abbey's Bunker at the top of the mire. I wouldn't say they're particularly difficult. Probably the whole thing would take an hour. I think the last time I did it, and I pretty much do it solo, the last time I did it on Lauren, I think she was about level 100. It took me half an hour to do both quests. You do have to traverse this road in the mire, so if you don't have any locations, it means you have to pretty much walk the entire road. So that's worth bearing in mind. The other big issue for a lot of people is, before you do that quest, you must have done Rose's quest at the top of the world. Now, this is probably my least favourite quest in the game. It is very long, very silly, and quite challenging. The second time I did it on Nora, it was not saving my progress. So I ended up doing it five times, and the fifth time I had to do it all in one go, which was a bit of a pain. It is difficult if you're lower level because you won't have locations on the map. 
Obviously, it is easier to get around now with public teams because you can travel to people in your team, you can travel to other players' camps, which helps you get around the map if you don't have a lot of locations. But this quest is a gateway quest. If you want to carry on and do Wastelanders, get yourself a jetpack, increase your faction rank, all of these things, get access to secret service plans, you need to do this quest. So please just do this quest. <laughs> if you can't, for whatever reason, it's worth noting that because this is an in-game plan, other players can actually build flamer traps in your camp. I actually recently saw a video by Mr. Church where he asked a random player to build him one because he was on a low he was building on a new low level character and he did not have the flamer trap plan. So you can ask friends, you can ask people in your team, you can put out a I don't know, on other systems, on Xbox we have a looking for system where you can ask other players for help. So that is always an option. Alternatively, you can get into PvP with another player. Make sure you have pacifists turned off and that you're not in the same team. Then direct them to which pieces you want broken. Here is actually a good example of how tough the brick set is in comparison with the barn set. It's taking much longer to break those brick pieces. Obviously don't ask Vlad because he gets a bit over enthusiastic. But once your pieces are broken, get into build mode and start double walling. Be aware, if you're in PvP with another player, that your turrets will attack them. Once you've double walled, just go round and repair the broken pieces. Moving on to Atom Store items. The first one is the Humble Catwalk. These are really useful tools if you are building. I use them for three different things mainly. The first thing is for offsetting foundations. By using a half catwalk I can offset a foundation very easily by half. I can also offset by a quarter and if you add a quarter and a half together by three quarters. Now, can you do this without catwalks? Yes. But only by a half. If you place a foundation with a staircase on top, add a half upper floor, another staircase, and your foundation. you have now offset this foundation by a half. The majority of the time in my builds I am only offsetting by a half. There have been the occasional one like the desert house and the sushi bar where I've had to offset using different catwalk pieces. And if you've seen any of my technical videos I also built a blueprint to create an A-frame house using halves and quarters.
but for the majority of my builds you will only ever have to offset by a half. The other thing I use catwalks for and it's becoming pretty much in every build is for creating illegal ladders, staircases. And there is a reason for this. Because I like to build tiny houses, I was always restricted to building a minimum of two by three or one by three. The three being the amount of tiles you need to get a regular staircase in because you need one tile for it to place on, one tile for the body of the staircase and one tile for the upper floor. By creating these illegal staircases I am able to build a working staircase in only two tiles and it also even on a bigger build allows you more space upstairs so is there a way to replicate this without catwalks and the answer is yes we're going to have to create two blueprints take a foundation Add a staircase, half floor, staircase down, and another foundation to offset this foundation by a half. Now we want to add a wall, any wall. When you snap a wall onto a foundation on its own like this, it will always face outwards. We want to fa it to face the opposite direction. The easiest way is to move this foundation up, but of course we will lose our offset. So place another foundation behind it, move this one up, pull this wall so it is facing the other way. Move your foundation back. You can now remove that foundation. We are going to blueprint this and what it will do is it will flip this foundation halfway into this foundation, giving you a foundation of one and a half. So I will quickly blueprint it. Yes, I am playing on PC, but I am not playing Fallout 76 on PC. I am playing on Cloud Gaming, which is a virtual Xbox on my PC. And the reason I do this, it means it's much easier for me to record videos because I don't have to worry about a capture card. I just record my desktop. Now, we are going to place this blueprint and you will see that this foundation has flipped. You will get a little bit of glitching and shimmering. Now using this blueprint we are going to offset again on this end and the reason is I can put it in now we are going to put a staircase here. It's on the edge of this foundation, but it looks like it's halfway across this foundation. So we need to do our offset again.
We need to add our wall. Now, in this instance, if we move that, we will not be able to get it back. So to turn this wall around, we are going to add a door. I will use, as everything is non-atom store, I will use this door. I am going to convert the doorway to a plain wall and remove it. So now we have a floating door. Take another doorway and because doors have two snapping points you can snap the wall in the other way around and we can just remove the door. We're now going to blueprint this making sure you have everything and it's all white. Now, when we place this blueprint, the second blueprint, you will see that that second foundation has flipped in. And you can just build around like so. Add your upper floors and you too can put a ladder, a staircase in a 2x2 two two build. Now be aware that with these offset staircases that if you use a catwalk you would not be able to remove these ones. Because it's on a flipped foundation, this one you can actually take the floors off. So there are some advantages to doing it this way. And once you have built the blueprint, you can just use it over and over. There we go. And with certain floorings, the glitching is and shimmering is much less easy to see. Although I'm not sure I want this in my house, but you get the idea. Lastly, when it comes to catwalks, one of the things I have used catwalks for is to create floating camps. Using the same principle with the ladder, you can effectively create a completely floating ladder and then add floors to either end. Now, I do not do this very often and I am by no means an expert on floating camps. There are other YouTubers out there like Uranium Fever that have done a lot of advanced building techniques using this and I would suggest that if you want to build floating camps especially the ones really high in the uh, sky so that you can drop mini nukes on fashion at and make Lucy go blind for five hours <laughs> then by all means check out their videos if you want something quite simple though, it is easy to um, 
make a floating camp just by using roofs because if you convert your walls to doorways and have a build set where you can break the dependence then you can build a floating camp just using roofs. So that's pretty much all I have to say about that. The next item on my list is the vault tech generator. This tiny item changed the way I built my camps. I'll show you why. It's not uncommon to see camps wired up like this. Not that long ago I even saw someone, it, was, it wasn't a bad camp, it was a fairly nice camp, they'd spent a long time decorating it and they'd done this through the doorway. <laughs> Which, yeah, <laughs> sort of ruined the ambience. About two years ago, and I have done a video, um, I will put a link down below, I realised this. And this is pretty much how I power up all of my camps. I put a conduit on top of the generator. I take my pressure plate. and I merge the conduit down into the generator. It just reduces the profile. Now I can merge this into a piece of furniture, into a stash box, into a dresser, chest of drawers, you name it, I've merged one in, even into a bed, to create a power generating box. I also now merge these into the foundations to create a power generating area in my camp. And now you have invisible power. So, and just to show you that it works. It's probably too bright for you to see that that is lit up, but if you look on the right, you will see that the little electricity sign is white. If I put one over here, it is red because it is not powered. This one is powered. I have tried a few different things. I have tried merging these into a foundation but once it hits the ground it, it doesn't really like it, it gets a bit complicated. However, you can, if you do like these, attach a conduit to it and wire it up to make it power. Hang on, I'll take get rid of that one. And again, this is lit up. I did do this at the back of the desert house, which was kind of appropriate with it being a desert house because I could not because I had a very high ceiling, I could not get a generator up there without it being visible. So I used one of these at the back of the building. The other thing you may not be aware of is you can hide the very large generators. There's a couple of ways. You can build down under the map. There are various ways of doing that. I'm not going to 
show you that. You need to put home defense on. I have a crafting build. You need one level of home defense to build yourself this spikeboard trap. You can then balance one of these on top of it. Now you've got to make sure that it is actually balanced on top of the trap uh, on top of the trap. It will lift up slightly, like so. And what you can do is first of all we need to wire it up so we don't lose it. You can place a conduit on an object, a small object. I have used these power co power conduits. I quite often use the um, little succulent plants, but they are an atom store item. I have noticed recently we got these little snow globes from the Nuka World events. You can balance a conduit on top of one of these, like so. Wire it up. Move the object and the wire will go with it. You have to do that first move and after you've done that you can move this anywhere and it will stay connected. Although I will tell you if I went and had a cup of tea, logged off, this connection will break between sessions. It won't if you don't move it but if you try and move it again it will break the connection. Now what we need to do is trigger the spike board trap. It will be destroyed and the generator will disappear. What you will have still is a trailing wire. You can get rid of this by merging this down into the foundation. So that disappears, you still have your trailing wire. You can connect other connectors to this. Move them once, move them around. You can move them through, put them in doorways. You can put them in the corner of walls. And you can put them in the corners of foundations. I do find that the snapping is not as good when you're in build mode. I'm not sure if I'm in the way. There we go. So to show you that it's working. Let's get rid of that one. This is lit up again. You do have this trailing wire but I'm sure you can figure out how to hide it or put it outside your camp or even sort of box it in. So there are ways of invisibly powering your camp. I did do an electrical video a couple of years ago. I will put a link down below, although I recently had a criticism that apparently I never get to the point. I haven't seen it for a while, so I will leave that up to you. The last Atom Store item I want to discuss is build sets. 
Now, some build sets you might want to buy if you have no income, you have no money to waste on buying Atom Store stuff. If you're new to the game and you want something that has already been and gone, be aware that you can contact support. They have a list of things that are available and some of the build sets are on there. The reason having one of these build sets is beneficial is for two reasons. Most of the new build sets have these top wall arches on the same tab. The reason this is important is because it's very useful when you're building complex things to break dependencies. And the same goes for roofs. And again, it's to do with what is on the tab. All of the roof types are on one tab. So, for example, when I built my UFO, you need to be able to switch the roofs around and also if you want to create floating items like this. Now it does not have to be an Atom Store build set. Most of the seasons drop a build set. This build set came from I think it was season 7. This build set and its roof meet all the requirements that I've suggested. This one I do find particularly useful. So if you don't want to spend money, then unfortunately it means you will have to grind out a season. I have completed nine seasons in Fallout 76 and believe me, it's a grind. I treat myself once I've finished to leaving 76 alone and going and playing ESO. So, if you don't have access to certain items because they're no longer in the Atom Store, be aware that most of the things I've shown do come around. Sometimes they're in bundles, so check out the bundles. If you can't afford it and you're new to the game, it is worth pointing out that under the challenges character, survival, combat, social and world by doing these challenges you can earn atoms. You can earn atoms by completing the scoreboard and there are atom challenges within the scoreboard as well even if you don't get to the end. So I hope these tips and tricks have helped. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. That's all from me today. Thank you for watching.